on day one, I spawned in as a baby golden creeper. What is this place? And why are there so many mobs gathered? The world has become overpopulated. Only one of each of you can survive. Only one of us can live? What? No! Son, you are the golden creeper. It is your destiny to defeat death and stop him. I know you can do this. But how am I supposed to do this, mom? Just then, death casts a spell on all of us, killing my mother and all but one of the other mobs. Mom! That began to tell us how we should be grateful for the new lives he has provided us with until he noticed me. A golden creeper? Impossible. You can be real. Death began to rain skeletons down from the sky in an effort to kill me. I began to dodge the falling corpses. As a baby, I only had five hearts, so I knew I couldn't get hit more than once. I jumped into the air to avoid their attacks and caused an explosion. Whoa, that was cool. Suddenly, a strange cow with an eye patch entered. Golden Creeper, you must come with me at once. I followed the cow. We ran out of the temple, eventually losing him. On days two to three, I was following the cow through the world, who introduced himself as Mac. We entered what looked to be a run down shelter. What is this place, Mac? This is the safe haven that I've been building to keep everyone safe from death. He told me that death had begun to kill off most of the mobs in order to reduce the population. Most species are down to one of each now. Families separate. Kingdoms destroy. We have to fight back against him. I was reluctant to join in the fight. I was too afraid of what might happen to me. The cow shook his head. Mac said that for some reason, death seemed very concerned with my golden creeper appearance. He believed I was super important and was a threat to death. I'm not sure I can be of much use. I'm just a baby after all. What am I supposed to do? Go to the Golden Temple and read about the prophecy. Be warned though, Death's men have taken it over. I looked around at all the sad and scared mobs that were here. I had to do something to help them. I mustered up the courage and agreed to go to the temple. Mac dropped me a stone sword and told me to be careful. I headed off. I had traveled for a long time when I finally approached a large golden looking temple. Well, I assume this is the place. As I approached it, I noticed more of the death's minions were here. I entered the temple, making sure to remain undetected until I came to a large open room. There was a book in the middle, and I began to read from it. The book said that a hero with a pure heart would rise up against death. Death would fear this individual because he held the hope of the people in the world and could inspire them to fight back. In order to do so, he would have to lead a team. He would need someone brave, someone passionate, someone strong, and someone lost. The book ended, and I wasn't sure what it all meant, but I knew what I was going to have to do. I would need to assemble this team and defeat death before it was too late. Before I left, I looted the chest near the book and got a set of gold tools. Mac was right. I just need to regroup with him. On day five, as I was leaving the temple, I saw smoke in the distance where the mob shelter had been. I rushed towards it, but was met by Mac and a much smaller group of mobs that had lived there. What happened? <clears throat> Death's men found our base. They began to attack us, and I tried my best to defend everyone. He said that he was powerless to save his own family and a majority of the mobs. I'm so sorry. I need to make it up for them. I led everyone to a clearing and then went out to gather materials. I was able to gather wood and stone very quickly thanks to my golden tools. But unfortunately, they broke. With all the materials, I constructed a shelter for myself, as well as the other creatures that were with Mac. I added chests and furnace to my base, and then crafted a set of stone tools with the remaining stone and wood I had. Mac was very appreciative for what I did and then asked what I had learned. I told them I had decided it was time to fight back. I was going to lead a team that would defeat death. On day six, I headed through the world in order to locate more members to join my team. I was confident I'd already found the brave member. Mac was ready to fight back against death even by himself, but I would still need the others. I arrived at a destroyed village and began to look around for anyone or anything that could help me. There wasn't much, but I was able to find seeds in one of the chests, as well as harvest a small amount of crops from the farm. I continued on my journey, arriving at a neighboring village. Just like the previous, there were no signs of life here either. Where was I going to find more people if most of them were gone? I was so frustrated. You didn't creep her. The prophecy will never be fulfilled. A group of undead mobs entered the base and began to charge at me. I was able to use my creeper explosion to knock them back. I used my ground smash ability to take some of them out before fighting the rest off with my sword. As I killed them, I grew into a full-size creeper. I even had 10 hearts. I also noticed I had gained something. It was a golden blast ability. One of the minions had drop something. It was a map? But to where? I decided it was best to follow it. I followed the map to a demonic looking place. What was this? 
this. I made my way inside and began to look around. I came to a large opening in the center. And to my surprise, Death himself was there. What are you doing here? I could ask you the same. This is my fortress. Why? Why do you hate this world so much? What reason can you have for wanting to kill so many innocent people? Why, you ask? When I was alive, my father and I were poor and starving. I begged the people in our town to help us, but no one ever showed us any compassion. They left us there to die. He said because of how many people lived in the village, food was scarce. And eventually, his father starved to death. I lost the only person I cared about. I came up with the solution to solve this problem and get my revenge. Every creature will be grateful for the new life I give them. No one should have to suffer again. I'm sorry for the way they- ah! He wasn't listening and began to attack me. I tried to use my abilities on him, but he was too powerful. I spotted more of his minions beginning to crawl out of every place in the fortress and knew I had to leave. On day eight, I returned back to the base empty-handed. I had been overpowered by death and his army. I was furious, but at least not all was lost. I had returned with a food source for our people. Mac and I got to work constructing a farm so everyone would have something to eat. As I planted the seeds, I thought about death and his father. Why did no one help them? All of this could have been prevented. Max snapped me out of it. Were you able to locate any more of the team members for the prophecy? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to. All I was able to find was more death and destruction, just like you showed me. There has to be some place that death hasn't reached, right? We just need to know where to look. Max suggested that I take a trip to the Arctic biomes. Maybe the cold was too much for death and his army to handle. With no other leads at this point, I knew death was not going to slow down at any moment, so I had to hurry. On days 9 to 10, I traveled into the snow biomes and started to hear cries? Someone else is here. I followed the sounds to a graveyard. I saw creatures and rushed towards them. I'm so happy to see more people. I thought everyone had been wiped out. The snow leopard spoke. We were the lucky ones. Chester's brother wasn't so lucky. I looked at the penguin who was mourning over a gravestone. I wish you were here. Well, there's a way that we can all make this right, I promise. I explained the prophecy and urged them to join the team. The snow leopard had introduced himself as Clyde. We should be grateful for what we have. He said no one should fight back and to stay away from his family if we knew what was good. He didn't want to mess with death and risk the people that were still there to get hurt. The penguin looked hesitant. Clyde barked at him to come with him. What if he doesn't want to? Maybe let him make his own choices. Clyde began to yell at him again and told him to back off. Enough! Just let me pee with my brother. Clyde wandered off to another group of animals, and I was left there with Chester. Tell me a way to kill this golden creeper. So the prophecy has been set in motion. There is nothing you can do. <laughs> Chester and I began to make our way away from the graveyard and towards my base. He was still distraught about the loss of his brother. Ch I really miss him. He was much braver and stronger than I'll ever be. I tried to encourage him, but he continued to talk about how incredible his brother was. I'm not even sure what to do without him. It all started to make sense. Someone lost. I reassured him that we would make things right. He told me he was excited that someone was fighting back. The penguin told me he wished it upon a star that crash landed in the desert. Wait, what? A star landed in the desert? I told him I had to go investigate it. This had to be important. I gave him the location of my base, and we separated. As I traveled towards the desert, I got a strange feeling. Suddenly, death was in front of me, angrier than ever. I tried to apologize for what happened to him, and urged him to reconsider what he was doing. This world needs salvation, whether they like it or not. No one should feel the pain I felt. He said I would ruin everything he has worked so hard to create and began to fight with me. I was far too weak to take him on now, so I had no choice but to flee while he chased after me. On days 13 to 14, I managed to escape death again and made my way into the desert, and it was way hotter than anything I had experienced, but I managed to find a large palace with a light shining from it. I entered it and began to search for anything of use. I found something in the center of one of the rooms. I grabbed it. It was a lost soul? What was this? Suddenly, Suddenly, I started to feel woozy and uh Ready or not, here I come. 
Whoa, that must have been Mac and his family before death started harming everyone. Everything seemed so peaceful and simple. As I was preparing to leave, I saw something strange moving across the floor. Tentacles shot up from the ground and began to attack me from all sides. I used my ground slam ability to fight them. More started to surround me, so I exploded, blowing up part of the ground around us and defeating them. One dropped something and I picked it up. Whoa, a golden tentacle. I was able to use it as a weapon and pull myself around the world. This is gonna come in handy. I left the temple with a soul and headed towards my base. On days 15 to 16, I entered and saw that there was an igloo there. What was this? I built Chester a home while you were gone. He seems lost about his brother. It was nice to see everyone was starting to get along. I asked Mac about where he lived before death started to attack. He described to me the same village I'd seen and talked about playing with his family constantly. So the vision I had was real. Something had sent the soul there and wanted me to see it. I knew what I was fighting for. I showed Mac the soul and he was not sure what it meant. But after explaining the memory, he knew that it was important. Maybe someone in this world has like an idea of these things, you know? You're probably right. I need to find more information on what these are and why they're here. I told my companions to watch over the base and headed out to explore more. I explored more of the world and hoped to find answers to some of my questions. As I traveled, I found myself once again confronted by Clyde. But this time, he wasn't with his group. What are you doing here? I came to put a stop to you once and for all. He said what I was doing was very dangerous and needed to be stopped before I hurt anyone else. I don't want to fight with you. You know we're on the same side, right? He didn't seem to care and lunged at me with his claws. Ah, it took some of my heart. I had to fight back or risk losing everything I was working for. I exploded and sent him flying back. He was resilient and charged at me again. I begged for him to stop but he wouldn't. I don't want to defeat him because we would need everyone to fight against death. So I used my tentacle to make a quick escape. Once away, I realized that he had taken me down to only half a heart. Man, I was going to need some upgrades to complete this mission. I headed towards a nearby cave. On days 19 to 20, I looked through the cave to find iron. I spent a good amount of time mining. It was worth it because I had enough to craft myself an iron set of tools and armor as well. I was feeling far more confident with my thanks to my upgrades, but I was still puzzled. I was gonna have to find someone passionate and someone strong for my team. Clyde seemed to fit both of these, but he would never listen. As I went to leave, I spotted some gold, so I decided to mine it. As I collected it, I had another vision. I was in front of a strange looking outpost. I spotted a man fighting against the undead. You will never take this world, you monster! This must be one of my team members. He needs my help. I have to get there, quickly. I headed off to the forest. I was wandering through it, looking for something that resembled what I'd seen in my vision. There it was. I quickly ran inside and called out for the hero that I saw. Where are you? Who's there? Ah, something to fight. A pillager? What? An arrow flew past me. Hey, hey, stop. He shot more arrows at me and I quickly overpowered him thanks to my new upgrades. What is wrong with you? All my friends are gone and I haven't had anything to fight in a long time. He introduced himself as Hank and told me that he missed players and villagers and had a strong passion for raiding and fighting. Passion for fighting the good. I guess in a world with slim pickings, this guy will have to do. I told him about my quest and why I would need him. The pillager was reluctant to join me, but decided it was better than being alone. I started to ask him about players and he told me of a community that players used to gather at. I have to go there and see if I can find more answers for my quest. I sent him to base and headed out. On day 24 to 26, I was heading towards the player community I'd been told about. I spotted a massive horde of undead monsters that were searching for me. I could hear them calling out for the golden creeper. Oh man, I have to be careful. I can't be spotted. There was no way I'd be able to take all of them on at once. I did my best to sneak past them. I thought I was in the clear, so I tried to make a break for it, but... The golden creeper! The group spotted me and began to charge. I used my new tentacle and was able to take some of them down, but more and more were charging at me. Uh, I have to get out of here now. I used my ability to quickly make an escape. Sir, the golden creeper is growing stronger. He has left me no choice. I will kill every mob in this world and create new ones. Grateful for the life I have given them. <laughs>
On days 27 to 29, I made my way into the player community. Most of the buildings looked like they had been attacked. Ah! A player jumped out from one of the buildings and began to attack me. Ah, no! He stopped and looked at me. He apologized for attacking, believing I was another undead monster. He led me to his house to talk. Inside, he introduced himself as Steve. Wait, you're Steve? You look so different. He told me that he had been in this world for a long time. I showed him the soul and told him about the prophecy. He seemed intrigued by all of it. Hmm. From what you are saying, it appears as though these are the souls of creatures killed from death. Because death took them before their time, their souls remained on earth. Combining them might be able to unleash all the souls back into the world. The prophecy seems to be missing something. Their team will need more to take on death. Steve told me that each of them would need to possess a weapon that was close to who they were in order to take death down. I asked him if he knew where I could find more of the souls and he suggested I check here before dropping me a map. He said he would do his best to locate more of them for me. And then we parted ways. I made my way back towards base, but I spotted death perched upon a large mountaintop. I confronted him and told him that everything he had done would never last as I would fulfill the prophecy. I have a solution for that. He said in order to stop me, he would just wipe out all life on earth instead and create new creatures. The new inhabitants will know nothing of the time before and be grateful for life. You're a monster! I will never let you get away with this! Death told me he was done talking and summoned creatures to fight me! I fought back against them and was able to take them down. You're next! I started a fight with Death! I could tell I was starting to hurt him, but I would never last in this fight! I left as more undead started to rush towards me. Death <laughs> laughed and said, <laughs> You cannot kill Death. On days 33 to 35, I made it back to base and noticed that another house had been constructed. Chester and Mac had worked on a house for Hank, but he didn't seem to care at all. They were actually arguing. I'm far stronger than all of you. I broke up the argument and Mac told me he didn't know how he felt about this guy. Hey, come on. He's uh, passionate in some ways, especially about fighting. Uh, back against death. If you believe in him, I will support you. Mac told me that some of the people were starting to grow restless and I would need to show them progress to soothe their worries. I told them I already had a lead on it and was going to head off and make sure everyone knew I was making some progress. I stopped by a cave to find some quick upgrades. I searched for a while and found enough diamonds for a set of tools and boots. I left the cave and started to follow the map that Steve had given me. On days 36 to 38, I followed the map to a strange village. I looked around at all the destruction that had occurred. Clearly, death had been here already. I'm not sure why, but Steve believed that the soul was here and I had to trust him. I searched house after house, but everything was empty. I finally came across one house. Inside, I found a journal and I began to read. It was a journal from a man who lived here with his son. We have run out of food, and it seems that no one has enough to share with us. The only thing I care about in this world is my son, Thomas. Despite his resentment for them, I still know there is good inside of him. I suddenly realized the journal was from Death's father. The book began to shake, and another one of the lost souls appeared on the ground. With the soul, I turned to leave, but decided to take the journal as well. Maybe reading this could change Death's outlook. On days 39 to 41, I started to make my way back toward my base when I heard a command motion in the distance. I decided to investigate it and saw Clyde with his family and they were fighting with a large bear. Be hungry. Want food. The snow leopard told them to stay away from them and refused to share. The bear was easily handling Clyde, but I jumped in anyway. I broke up the fight and once again tried to make Clyde realize we were all in this together. I began to explain the souls and the mission I was on, but he cut me off before I could finish. Stop meddling with death. You'll ruin everything for all of us. Clyde stormed off to a small group, and the bear thanked me for helping him. Uh, no problem. He was so easily able to overpower Clyde. His strength is unmatched. I offered him a spot on the team and told him I would share all the food I had with him if he accepted. Hey, Brutus, me come with you. Welcome to the team, Brutus. We walked off toward base. On days 42 to 44, Brutus and I returned, and I introduced him to the team. I showed off the soul I'd collected, and everyone was relieved to understand they were real, and this nightmare may come to an end. After that was in order, we built Brutus a home at the base and I gave him some food. He quickly ate it and I realized we were going to need a lot more. Mac and I got to work expanding the farm. That way, we can have more than enough food to feed everyone. Once I was finished, I talked to Mac about the 
need for each one of our team members to acquire an item that would help defeat death. I'm not even sure where to begin looking. I told them Steve was certain about this, and our combined strength would be enough to take him on. I think I might know what I need. Hank had overheard our conversation and talked of an ancient crossbow located at the pillagers headquarters that was used in the first raid. Do you know where we can find it? He nodded and I had him lead the way towards it. On days 45 to 47, we arrived at a pillager outpost like I'd never seen before. This place was massive. We made our way inside and saw the remains of pillagers and the undead scattered all over. I was really hoping I was not the last pillager. I could tell that this was weighing heavy on him, but we continued deeper into the headquarters toward the main building. Hank slowly walked through it, looking around, talking about how he had not been here since he was a child. But uh, I was able to see the crossbow. Hank grabbed it and then began to sob. <laughs> I can't believe what this world has become. Hey, everything's gonna be okay, all right? I promise. We all have to work together and we'll be able to restore everything to the way it was before. I'm ready. Let's do this. We began to leave the headquarters and had it made it far when I heard screams in the distance. Okay, Hank, you should probably go back to base. I'm gonna go see what's going on. I followed the screams to a small encampment in the snow where I saw death fighting with Clyde. I had to help him. I rushed in and remember the journal I had. Wait, I dropped the journal to death who picked it up and began to read it. My father, after all they had done, he still believed there was good. There was hesitation in death. Maybe I was wrong. Yes. That was the past, though. Wait, what? Death summoned lightning from the sky, striking all of us and killing Clyde's group. What have you done? He jumped at death and started a fight with him. I had to help, so I began to use my abilities to hit death as well. Death seemed frustrated by how powerful we were together. Ugh, enough of this. And sent us flying through the air. On days 51 to 53, we crash landed in the middle of a dark forest biome. Ugh, everything hurts. This is all you your fault. You had to interfere with everything and look at where this got us. I'm sorry for what happened, but you can never trust him. I'm gonna complete this and save everyone whether you want to help or not. You must know what I'm doing is right and I know it. You can help or you can live in fear. Either way, it's up to you. Choose how you want to live the rest of your life. I eventually made my way back, feeling so tired and weak. Chester quickly approached me. Joe, while you were gone, I went out and made you these. He dropped me a diamond chest plate and pants. Thank you so much. I looked around the base, and it was filled with life. Hank was starting to get along with everyone, and everyone seemed excited about me bringing them together. Steve then arrived and said he had great news. While scouting the world, I spotted something. Deep in the jungle, there is a temple with a light like you described. I was tired, but knew I would be able to rest when everything was was right. I thanked Steve and headed off. On days 54 to 56, I made my way through the jungle until I came across a palace that had a beam of light coming from the top. I ran into a huge jungle monster. It started to attack me, but thanks to my new diamond armor, I wasn't taking as much damage. I used my abilities and was really starting to grow confident with myself. Our fight raged on, but after a good fight, I was able to take him out. When I defeated it, I gained another 10 hearts. Great. Now I have 20. I made my way through the temple to a large area. In the center was another one of the lost souls. I rushed towards it and grabbed it. Ha! One day, Chester. This will pass to you. I don't know. I'm not as strong as you are, Dale. Yeah, you're right. You're stronger. Ugh, another vision. I know what Chester needs. With the soul, I headed back toward base. On days 57 to 59, I made it back and decided it was best to stash away the souls for safekeeping. I told Mac that I had found the soul and we were close to completing the prophecy. He asked me what was next. I turned to Chester and told him it was time for him to get his item. It's your brother's I staff. Wait, what? How do you know about that? I'm not worthy to hold it. You have to be. There's no time for us to waste. We have to leave right now. Chester told me he was far too afraid to go with me. Listen, we are all afraid of the unknown, but this is a time for you to find yourself. You're braver than you think. Your brother believed that, and so do I. Our team got together and encouraged our penguin friend that he was gonna be okay. All right, let's get The two of us walked out of the base and headed for the ice temple. How could I have been so foolish? On day 60 to 62, we arrived at the ice temple, and I can tell it was weighing heavily on Chester. He remained silent. As we entered the large hall, Chester stopped for a moment. I've not been here since Dale was killed. It's almost over, buddy, okay? You just need to... I knew I would find you. 
staff emerged from the shadows and began to attack us. Chester, get the staff and get out of here. We started a fight and I bought enough time for Chester to acquire the staff and make a run for it. I was starting to be overwhelmed by the onslaught of attacks, but I heard something behind me. It was Clyde and he joined in the fight. He apologized for the way he acted and wanted to make things right. Together, we were once again fighting death, but this time on the same side. Death was starting to feel our attacks when he said, I am tired of the two of you. He struck Clyde, and I can tell that he was badly injured. Death flew off and left us there. I have to get you back to base. Maybe we could heal you there. I was rushing Clyde back to base in the hopes that we could possibly heal him when he stopped me. I'm sorry for not realizing sooner. I see Chester deserved far better than the way I treated him. You did nothing wrong, okay? You were just trying to protect the people that you cared about. I was blinded by my own fear of losing the people I cared about. He said that he knew everything was going to be okay as long as I survived and continued on my mission. There's one more thing I need to tell you. I think I know where the final souls are. Clyde began to describe a large village he had passed by while traveling to my base. He said he saw a light coming from the center building. What he was describing was Max home village. I knew exactly what that place was. Good luck, Fozo. He then passed away. I will finish this for you and everyone else. Death will never win. I built him a small grave site before heading off to find the soul. On day 66 to 68, I made my way towards Max home village. I had been here in a vision, but things felt different. As I walked the streets, I got another vision of the time before death and how his village used to be filled with life. I was overcome with sadness. How could death become what he is now? I got even more sad to think about what he had done to this world. Hopefully, I'll be able to restore everything back to the way it was. I spotted the light coming from a large building and headed towards it. I entered what appeared to be a throne room. The soul was sitting on the top of the throne and I quickly grabbed it, giving me another vision. I saw villagers planting strange looking seeds in the farm before harvesting what appeared to be an enchanted wheat. I searched the chest in the room and found some of the seeds. I bet this is what Mac will need to find. With everything I had, I headed back towards base. <laughs> You are coming with me. On day 69 to 71, I returned to base, but nothing was right. It was in total ruins. What happened? Uh, Fozo, death attacked, and we were too weak to fight him. I rushed into my home, and luckily the other souls hadn't been taken. Seems like death hasn't caught on to what I've been doing. I gathered the group and noticed that someone was missing. Where's Mac? He was taken. Oh no, we have to go after him. The group didn't agree with me. They thought that they would die, and the prophecy wouldn't be fulfilled. Man, I need to change their mind. Minds, but we couldn't leave the base in this condition. All of us got together and began to rebuild the houses from the damages. Listen, guys, we need Mac to complete the prophecy. I have to rescue him. The group looked around, still very worried about the mission I was about to go on. I will protect him. Steve volunteered to come with me and make sure I returned safely. It was settled then. I handed them the seeds I had retrieved and told them to plant them. Steve and I then headed off. On day 72 to 74, Steve and I made it to Death's base. Together, we started to discuss a plan of how to save Mac. Steve said he would go and scout above and remain hidden. It was better that he believed I came alone. I agreed with him and we split up. I entered Death's lair and spotted him standing in front of Mac inside of a prison cage. I am here for my friend. Give him to me. I will make you a deal. I will free your friend and not harm anyone else in this world if you give yourself up now. Mac yelled for me not to do it, but Death quickly silenced him. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. That's not all. Fozo, I knew you could do it. My mother stepped out from the shadows. Was she really here? Death told me he would bring my mother back too. I just had to give up. Come and give me a hug. I started to walk towards her. Mom, you're back. As I approached her, Steve jumped out and hit Death. My mother faded away. It was all an illusion. Get Mac. I will hold him off. They began to fight and I freed Mac. We turned to help Steve, but we were too late. Death killed him. No. We have to get out of here right now. We made it for the exit and I turned back to see Death roar in anger. He was so close to stopping me, but Steve had saved me. I have to avenge him. I just have to. We returned back to base to deliver the bad news. 
Everyone was so excited to see her return until they noticed someone was missing. I somberly told them about the sacrifice Steve had made in order for us to escape. He believed in us and we can't let him down. We have to find the final soul and restore everything to the way it was before. Chester approached and said the crops they had planted were ready. I brought Mac to the farm and he collected some of the wheat. He instantly recognized it and said, I thought these were all gone. I have not seen this since I was a child. This was definitely Mac's item that he would need. He began to use the wheat and it had healing powers. This is going to come in handy. Brutus spotted us and said he believed he knew what his item was. Must go home. He started to walk off and I followed him. On days 78 to 80, I followed Brutus to a large cave entrance. Where was he leading me? We entered and we're in a massive open cave. What is this place? Why do you think your item would be here? Brutus home. He explained to me that before death, this was where he and his family lived with many of the other bears. Brutus hadn't returned since death had taken everyone out. He led me to a spot in the cave and there was a claw of some sorts. Leaders wear ceremonial claw. I can tell this was very difficult for him, and he was having trouble grabbing the item. You can do this. Everything is gonna be okay. Brutus grabbed the claw and equipped it. In a golden flash of light, I was transported to some undead-looking temple. It was guarded by death's massive army. I could see a beam of light coming from the top and knew that this was where I would find the final soul. <laughs> I was back in the cave. I told Brutus that we had to leave, but he didn't budge for a second. Goodbye, father. He started to walk out of the cave, and I realized why this was so hard for him. I quickly followed. On days 81 to 85, the entire team was assembled outside of the cave, and I told them what we had to do. The last soul is in a temple, crawling with death's forces. It will take all of us to rally and defeat them. I thanked everyone for believing in me and helping me through this prophecy that was bestowed upon me. Thank you, for for bearing this burden for us. Shot, you really have been an inspiration for all of us. You gave us all something to fight for when we seemed lost. Bozo, hero. With everyone behind me, we headed to the temple. As we arrived, there seemed to be no signs of death's army anywhere. Suddenly, they emerged from everywhere and started to attack our group. We started to fight back against all of them, but more and more started to come. Mac told me to go inside and get the soul. We can hold them off. I rushed inside the temple to locate it. Inside the temple, more undead mobs continue to pop out of the corners and attack me, but I was far more powerful than they were at this point. Do not let him complete the prophecy! When will you guys give up? I was able to take each and every one of them down with ease. I continued to look around for the soul. Eventually, I spotted it. I then reached for the soul. We just need to get these back to base so I can combine them with the others. Then, I can bring everyone back, even my mom. I rushed out of the temple and regrouped with my team members. Come on, guys. We need to get back to base fast everyone followed me back towards base on days 91 and 94 we arrived and i gathered all the souls together i waited but nothing seemed to happen wait was this all for nothing i just want my mother and friends back the ground then began to shake and all the souls formed into a soul stone it began to emit rays of light and energy in all directions there was a massive flash of light and then silence fell over my base. I grabbed the stone, but what had happened? As I stepped outside, I saw that there were more creatures than ever. Mac had his family. Wait, everyone had their family. Where was my mom though? You did it. I knew you could. Mother, I'm so happy to see you. I can't believe you're here. She told me that she knew from this first second she saw me, I would be able to save the world. With the souls combined, you may even be able to save death himself. There wasn't a second left to waste. Everyone said goodbye to their families, but we needed to go and end this now. On days 95 to 99, my team and I arrived at Death's base, and he must have expected us as his army of the dead was standing guard. With everyone together, I told them it was time to finish this once and for all. We all engaged in the fight. There were so many of the undead swarming all around us. Mac used his wheat to heal the members of the team. Hank used his crossbow with great effect to take them down at a range. And with Brutus's strength, we were able to cut right through the army and get close. When mobs would get close, Chester would use the ice staff to freeze them in place so that they could easily be defeated. Everything was going according to plan until death emerged and summoned more of the undead. He then retreated back to his lair. It seemed as though he might be overrun by the sheer numbers. Chester called out to me and said, Thumbs down! You have to stop him now! We can't keep fighting forever! Brutus, clear a path for me! He was able to cut through the undead, giving me a clearing to chase death. On day 100, I confronted death. I told him that everything he had worked for had 
failed. Everyone is back, and you can't kill them again. I will wipe you out and start again. He started to use all of his abilities again, summoning undead creatures and making corpses rain down from the sky. I leapt into the air and used my ground pound ability to take out most of the monsters he summoned. I got close and started to use my golden explosion ability to weaken him. You can't be this powerful. He was weak and close to losing. Thomas, I'm gonna do this for you. I activated the soul stone and in a flash of light, he was turned back into his human form. Listen, you have another chance in life, Thomas. There's still time for you to be good. I think you're right. I should forgive and forget. He stepped closer to me and then yelled, pulling out a dagger and rushing. Death was no more and the world was restored to the way it should be.